that's right we are going to create a force field or a magical protective shield using geometry nodes first of all thanks for stopping by to check this video so without any nonsense let's start the process to get started here i set it up a simple scene with a susan and a plane plane will act as our force field so let's rename it to force field and head over to geometry nodes workspace to start the magic Create a new node setup for the plane and remove the group input and output connection. To create a hexagonal field, we need an icosphere. So shift A mesh primitive icosphere and increase its radius and give it a two subdivisions. Now to turn this into a hexagonal shape, go to mesh and add a dual mesh node. Worth mentioning that this node is only available in 3.1 alpha or higher version. So if you are using a 3.0 stable version, you need to download the alpha to follow along. So, straight away you can see all the triangular faces of the icosphere turned into hexagon. Well, at least it tried. Since we got our basic force field or magical shield, whatever you want to call it, we got it set it up. Now we need to have a mask to make it appear and disappear whenever, wherever we want. To create that, I'm going to use an empty sphere and drag it into the node setup. Now, how we're going to create that mask is, I'm going to delete faces from our field or our shield that are not in a specific distance from the empty. Here we can use the position vector of each point of our field and calculate the distance between each of those points and the location of our empty. To do that, we add input position node which by the way contains the position data of all the points in our mesh. Then add a vector math node and drag the position and location of the empty to its input sockets and set the cal calculation type to distance. To get that specific distance that we need to mask out, add math node and set the type to greater than. Now this threshold value will be our masking distance. To demonstrate this more visually, I'm going to add a material to our node setup and extract the value using group output. I rename that attribute to mask and change the spreadsheet editor to shader editor and add an, add an attribute node and copy paste the attribute name. Now you can see clearly which areas are affected by the mask we created. To make this mask more visually easy to understand, I'm going to use the scale value of our empty as our threshold. Now every part of the shield that is not inside this empty will mask out. To remove those parts, Add a delete geometry node and use this mask as its selection input. Selection input here is either 0 or 1, which means 0 will stay and 1 means your time is up, so get lost. Because we need to remove the faces, I change the delete type to faces instead of points. Look at that. To make it look more like the demos I showed earlier, I add a split edges node. What that does is it separates each face and now I add a smooth modifier after geometry node modifier and, and tweak its factor. I actually spent quite a lot of time trying to figure this out but then I found this method from Ducky 3D channel and this is far easier than I even thought of. So definitely check that out. Now to get that wired looking effect, I duplicate the force field and rename it to something like force field wire. Make sure to unlink the geometry node before you start tweaking. Otherwise, you end up overwriting your previous node setup. So I'm going to rename each node setup and select our force field wire node setup and delete its split edges node. Now I turn this into a curve by using mesh to curve node. Let me hide the previous sheet to have a better view. Now I turn this curve back into a mesh by using curve to mesh node. Here we have the option to turn this to a mesh by plugging in a curve shape to profile curve input. For that I use curve circle but you can use any shape for this. I turned on the resolution to 6 to make that shape also into a hexagon and plug that into a profile curve socket. You will probably have to change the radius to a lower number to see the effect. Look at that. I want to extend this little bit more than our shield mask. I could use a vector math node and add some value to the scale. But here, instead of doing that, I change the delete type to something like point or edge. Here, I stick with edge. 
and then I add a noise texture and a mix RGB node to disrupt the gradual fall of the distance, make it more uneven. Then tweak the factor you like. Here I also like the result of the difference mode. And you probably won't see much effect if your uh, mesh is lowest. Oh, look at that. I, I really do like that one. Now let's talk about that wave effect. In order to make that wave effect and make it behave according to our mass, I tried using a few methods, but this is the one I ended up with. We are going to use our distance and make it a repeatable pattern. Then we use that pattern to displace our mesh. Since the distance is calculated using the location of our mass, it will automatically rotate to face the mass object. So let's see how we do that. To displace anything in geometry nodes, we can use the set position node and change its offset to get the result. We are going to plug our wave pattern to this offset socket. Here I use the distance and plug it into a vector math node and change the math type to modulo and plug the vector output to offset. Now when we change the second value, it is going to start to make a repeatable pattern. Here I use the value node to change all three values at once. Again, you will need to have a high res mesh to see the effect clearly, but let me use the shaders to explain what we are doing. I mute these nodes and output this vector as a new attribute. Now when I change the value, and it also reacts into our mask, but when I unmute that set position node, it kind of looked like a messed up version of what we actually need. So, well, that happens because we are not displacing it along the normals of our object's points. So to do that, add a normal node and multiply it with our modulo output. If I kind of looks strong, so let's use another multiply node to reduce it. Point one seems good. And now when we unmute all the muted nodes, just look at that. If you want to use this in the shader editor, look at what's happening. Not what we want, right? That is because although we use this to displace our mesh, later down the line, we change that mesh to curve and back into a mesh. So the mesh we are displacing and the mesh we set materials has two different normals. So it is not going to work properly in the shader editor. So the best way to do this is using the vector before it multiplies with the normal. Because at that particular place, we are only dealing with our distance and it is gone for whole mesh before or after it turns into a curve. Now we can use it to make heights and values to two different colors. You might have to multiply the value because modulo usually outputs a low value. Now you can do all the other stuff in the shade editor, which I'm not going to cover in this video, in the next video, we will finalize our geometry node, animate it, and probably create a cinematic scene. Who knows? Oh, before I finish, if you want to smooth this repeating pattern, you can use a color ramp in between modular output and the multiply node and uh, make it look like this. So make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to HellFX Learn and tell us your thoughts on the comment section. So, and you can download the project files from the description. So until next time, 